Aye. It's been a while since I've done a Hunter Movies project update. I don't know why it took so long, but I figured it's August, so now I, I have to commit and I have to do it. I have not reached the halfway mark. I'm at like 36, 37 movies. Don't judge me. I am, I am going to watch a lot more in August and September. I've just been busy with stuff. So I want to talk about some movies. I can't promise you that I'm going to share all of the movies that I've been watching, but if you want to know what I think about every movie that I'm watching, even those new movie releases that I don't review on the channel anymore, and you're thinking, man, I just, I wonder what Nick thought about The Green Knight. Make sure you go follow me on Letterboxd and you can go check out my reviews over there. That's where I post all my movie reviews on movies old and new. And uh, I also update my lists in terms of movies that are my favorites of the year, as well as, uh, you know, my 100 films project and other things. So make sure you guys go follow me on Letterboxd. This is not an ad. So I'm going to talk about a few movies that I picked out. And the first movie I'm going to talk about is Bong Joon-ho's Memories of Murder. I did get this during the Criterion sale. And I was hyping this up because I talked a lot about this movie. And I finally watched it. And this is a movie that I absolutely loved. Bong Joon-ho is an auteur. He has such a great craftsmanship towards filmmaking. He always uses these socioeconomic messages in his films that are, you know, sprinkled in based on, you know, where people live, based on society as a whole, based on the underprivileged. And I, I really saw that in this movie, but not as much as I've seen in the other films. This movie really dives into that detective crime thriller, and it does it in such a way that is unique because it doesn't give you all of the answers and it unveils things to you very slowly. I mean, and that's the beautiful thing is Bong Joon-ho's movies, they all have a great semblance and a great pacing. I think he is one of the best in terms of pacing. He's able to slowly unveil certain things, but he doesn't take too long in unveiling them. And I love that about his movies and about Memories of Murder. The next movie I want to talk about is Solaris. This is another Criterion movie that I bought last July by Andrei Tarkovsky. It is a Russian film. I thought going in that this was going to feel a lot like Interstellar. It is not that at all. This movie dives deep into human nature about life itself. It answers questions or tries to kind of present more questions about what life is and how really life is almost, if not nothing, but love. It's very weird. This movie is just so unique in, in its storytelling. The characters are all fantastic. They never felt fake. They never felt artificial. I felt like I was actually isolated on the space station with them, which is my favorite aspect of the movie is the isolation feel because you are on the space station throughout the entire film and you don't really understand what Solaris is. And that's what I love about it. You have to watch video essays. You have to dive deeper. You have to rewatch this movie. And I think this is a movie that I will go back to often because of how impressive it was. Also, the score is incredible. It's immaculate, it's gorgeous. It definitely left me with such a great impression. Uh, so Solaris is one I definitely recommend you check out. The next movie that I'm gonna be talking about is going to be What's Eating Gilbert Grape. This is one that I just recently watched. So Nate and Jackson, they were both watching it. It's on Netflix and they're like, Nick, you gotta watch it. And they kept pressuring me. They're like, Nick, you gotta watch it. 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 And I decided to finally watch it. So I watched it. This movie stars Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio, a very young Leonardo DiCaprio. And this is a movie basically about uh, Gilbert Grape and his life. I mean, he's a, he's a regular guy who lives in this one town that he can just never leave. He's stuck there. His mother is big, like, I mean, fat. She has been torn down from certain traumas that have happened to the family. And because of this, it's traumatic and that stress is put on all of her children. Leonardo DiCaprio's character is mentally challenged and he does such a phenomenal job in this movie. I thought Wolf of Wall Street, Leonardo DiCaprio was my favorite performance. I actually think it might be this movie. I think this movie sold me on Leonardo DiCaprio. This movie is just such a beautiful film about life, about family, about love and discovery. And I, I thought that that was such a great thing about this movie is it's, 
it, yes, it has those sad moments, but it has those moments that are also very heartwarming and tender. I don't want to really spoil anything in this movie. Everybody's great here. Even the mother who plays Johnny Depp and Leonardo DiCaprio's mom. This was her first film and she was amazing. She's She was actually this big in real life, um, which is kind of crazy, but she does such a great job in this movie. I mean, everyone's so good. And it's just, it's one of those movies that I feel like you can just kind of have in a time capsule where it's one that will never get old. It, it will never feel like used. It will still be relevant to today in today's society. The Grand Budapest Hotel is directed by Wes Anderson. It's another movie that I finally watched. And Wes Anderson, I love his stylistic approach to filmmaking because he's a stylistic director. He's all about style. He's all about flair. And I, that's what I love about him. He is able to use shapes to, in his establishing shots that to me are some of the most beautiful shots I've seen in film. And Grand Budapest Hotel is no different. The colors used, just unbelievable. The way that these characters interact with one another, the quirky, witty nature to it, I, I just really enjoyed it. Also, I love the fact that Lord Voldemort played such a really great guy. <laughs> a guy that you can <laughs> really uh, root for in this one. <laughs> um, also, it's got, I think the actor's name is Tony Rovioli. The, the kid is, is Peter Parker's bully, Flash. That was surprising. He's really good in this movie, like really good. And he's a side character in the MCU now. Like, does he do anything else? Cause I, I thought he was outstanding in this movie. Sarah Ronan's in it. I mean, it's got a star studded cast. Like I'm not gonna, I don't even need to say everybody in, the, in this movie. Like Edward Norton, obviously Bill Murray. Like there's so many stars in this movie. It, it's it's kind of crazy. There was people that popped into this movie that I didn't even know were in this film. And it's, it's like such a fun story. I, I just really like this movie a lot. And uh, it's one that I definitely will revisit often. Fantastic Mr. Fox is still my favorite, but this one definitely still has that Wes Anderson flair and it's, it's just a really fun movie. I've also been watching uh, a lot more horror lately because I'm really just so into horror. So horror is my favorite genre and I will be making a video soon talking about some things happening to the channel because I really want to talk more about horror. I mean, it's something that I'm so passionate about. But anyway, the horror movie I want to talk about is Terrifier. This is a independent slasher film and I've heard a lot of people over the years say, Nick, you got to watch this movie. This is this is a movie that you would like, especially in the horror community, uh, especially, you know, supporting independent filmmakers and slashers, because slashers are my favorite subgenre of horror. And I watched this movie and I gotta say, I don't like it. I don't like it. I hate leaving this video on a bad note, but I really don't like this movie. This is a movie that to me is way too gruesome, way too violent. And I, I like the, the gore, I like the violence, but to an extent, this goes way over the line. I mean, there are scenes in this movie that are forever etched in my head that to me, left me feeling like I needed to bathe in chemicals. I felt sick to my stomach and I should never feel that way watching a movie. Like Rob Zombie does some pretty horrific, violent stuff in his films, but this is nothing compared to this movie. And it felt like they were only trying to do that in this movie. There's no really substance of plot. The characters are caricatures. You don't care about their cannon fodder as well to Art the Clown, who's a creepy clown, don't get me wrong. But when people try to sell this narrative of, well, Art the Clown should go down as one of the horror icons along with, you know, the Mount Rushmore of icons and Michael Myers, the greatest horror villain of all time, Freddy and Jason Voorhees, I say no. No, 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 no. He does not deserve any of that. Why? Why? No, no, this this character, like, yeah, he's scary, he's creepy, but you go way too hard at this movie, and that's the problem. You will not get real people who love horror and want to genuinely feel that suspense coming and watching your films because every five minutes there are limbs literally being torn apart. And I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. It makes me feel sick. And for those of you who do like Terrifier, I'm happy you like it. It's just, it's not for me. I will watch the second movie just because I love slashers. I love horror and I'm a freaking sucker, I guess. But I just, I really hope that they, they understand that there is a subtlety to horror that makes it so good and actually makes it feel real. And when you don't have subtlety in horror, it makes it feel so artificial. 
that I, I just don't buy it. So anyway, that's gonna be my update. I did not share with you all the movies that I've watched. I wanted to share with you certain ones that kind of stuck out to me over the past few months. Let me know what you guys thought about these movies that I shared down below in the comment section of this video. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe if you want. I guess I'm not gonna make you do anything you don't wanna do. Cause everyone says that, subscribe, do this, do that. I'm not gonna, I don't really wanna even say that anymore. But uh, thank you guys for watching this video and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.